Good morning, everybody. Uh, well, I mean, if you're watching this a year from now, it's uh, about eight o'clock in the morning here uh, in Tinley Park, Illinois. But uh, just woke up and I was going through some of my uh, comments on some of my uh, recent videos. And one of them, uh, some people asked the same question a couple of times, and that was, uh, Eric, how do you get rid of char... Uh, or carbon buildup on a briar pipe as far as on the rim. Okay, a lot of you guys said you had some awesome estate pipes in your collection and you wanted some tips on how to uh, clean those up. So welcome to this old pipe, <laughs> uh, part one, which is going to address that. Um, so uh, I've got, let's see, I've got this custom built stub pipe, CB stub. Uh, which is, this was from their pocket line of pipes. This was meant to be compact so that you're getting the full bowl experience, but just something short uh, to keep in your pocket. So this one has already been through the OxyClean bath. Um, if you are looking to refurbish pipes, I'd really recommend that you check out my video on the Wally Frank refurbishing. But what you want to do is you want to soak this, uh, preferably, you know, as long as you can, maybe overnight into an OxyClean bath. And I usually use a heaping, um, a heaping uh, scoop of OxyClean in like a plastic Tupperware about this big with, with scalding hot water. And uh, all the junk and the tobacco and the tars and all that's going to come out of here. But it's also going to leave a very hard film on here. So what you do is you use a Scotch-Brite pad and you try and scrub off while it's still warm and, and still wet. You try and scrub off all the excess of the uh, oxidizing that comes off of the stem. And then... A really good friend of mine on uh, Facebook, I reached out to him because he does a lot of this stuff. And he told me to use the Scotch-Brite and then a magic eraser. And then you try and just remove the, because you'll feel it. You'll feel it feels rough to the touch uh, with the oxidizing that comes up off the stem. So you just try and go over the stem when it's still wet, when it's still in the sink. And you try and knock that off so that that's ready to be uh, put on a buffing wheel. Okay, so this stem has already been through that process of, um, it's already been through the process of trying to get the excess uh, oxidation off. Now I've got this bowl, and you'll notice, okay, you see the, the, the carbon buildup on the bowl itself? Okay, so you could tell this guy smoked this pipe quite a bit. I already reamed it, uh, so that would be part of this process too. Uh, so I've already reamed the bowl, but as you can see, there's that black residue on the bowl itself. And I can tell you, if you've got black residue on the rim of the bowl, that's one of two things. You can either burn briar uh, by using a torch type lighter where it's like, you know, uh, uh, I've seen people light pipes before. And it makes me cringe using like a, a like a torch cigar lighter. Um, with those types of lighters, the flame is too hot. You're going to end up burning the rim of your bowl. Uh, so, it, you know, you want to use a soft flame type lighter. So uh, this one, that is not burn from a, a lighter. That is actually carbon buildup from the flame and from the smoking. So that's going to easily come off, okay? I showed you guys a couple of pipes yesterday. Here's another one, okay? That one has the same uh, buildup here, okay, on the pipe. And in all this guy's pipes, all the buildup is going to be right here on the top part. He, on this one, which I've already cleaned up, he had just such buildup here. So it must have been the way that he was lighting it, that that flame is coming up and touching the top of the bowl. And again, on this custom-built um, bull moose that I cleaned up yesterday, uh, you see some of the remnants of it, but it's mostly uh, gone. 
uh, that would definitely be just, just from the heat. I've removed all the other uh, carbon buildup, though. Okay. So it's just kind of a, you know, just kind of a, a side effect of smoking a pipe long term. Uh, matches 860. If you look at his Friday Savinelli, his original one with the Roma Lucite stem, not the new one that the guy just sent him, but the whole entire bowl at the top used to be like a nice reddish color, you know, stained, and his is just black. But that's because Matches is constantly smoking and lighting that pipe. So it's natural to get carbon build up on there, but you guys ask me, how do you get it off, okay? So, um, again, this one was just completely covered. Uh, you, you could barely make out that there was a Meerschaum lining in this pipe. So it took quite a bit to remove that. And right now, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So the first thing you're going to need is Murphy's oil soap. Okay, I'm going to tilt this down so you guys can see. I'm going to take the bowl out of here, and I'm just going to pour some Murphy's oil soap into this dish. Do it up here so you guys can see. All right, that's perfect. Okay. Now, I just use an old toothbrush, all right? I just use an old toothbrush, and you're just gonna go around nice and gently, okay? Including around the rim. And you're gonna go around this bowl and gently just scrub it with the Murphy's oil soap. There's a, there's a trick and a key to getting rid of this char, not char, the carbon buildup. And it's the easiest thing in the world to do. You know what the trick is? Time and patience, that's all you need. There's no tricks of the trade, just time and patience. So all you do is just brush it on. Now, if you are not lucky enough, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people go to the dentist and the dentist will throw you some extra, um, they'll throw you some extra uh, toothbrushes. So I'd recommend using one of those. But if you don't have one of those, fold a pipe cleaner in half. Now, this is a trick that was taught to me by the Artful Codger. And uh, this is actually the Artful Codger's uh, method. So let's give credit where credit is due, shall we? The Artful Codger is the one that showed me how to get rid of the, uh, I mean, not only to use the Murphy's oil soap, but also how to get rid of the, the, the carbon buildup on the rim. So all he did was he took a pipe cleaner and he just went like this, just around the rim, okay? And what it's doing is it's penetrating that, that carbon buildup. It takes time uh, and it takes several applications but as you sit here and you let this sit, you'll actually see bubbling. And when that's bubbling, that means it's raising up gunk and garbage and junk off this rim. And you could actually see, see that? See it? There you go. It's already lifting the carbon buildup off the rim. And as you can see, even on this side, both sides now, it's dirty. So it's doing its job. It's lifting that carbon buildup off the rim. Uh, it'll probably take several times. As a matter of fact, the deeper and heavier the carbon buildup is, like this one, man, this one took many applications, and it probably took every bit of an hour uh, of letting it sit, going back to it, going back to it uh, to get the carbon buildup. I mean, this guy really loved this pipe. Uh, this was one of his favorites. I mean, when you've got uh, just a whole bunch of cake in this and that kind of carbon buildup, you know this what this was definitely one of his go-to smokers. So you're um, you see that uh, on pipes that typically are just excessively smoked, which is a good thing because that means that that pipe brought that guy a ton of enjoyment. And it's a good smoker. So I look forward to uh, trying these. And I hope they bring me as much enjoyment as they did for the previous owner. So I'm just going to go again around the rim here. 
okay? And then, I'm gonna let it sit. Okay, good. So I've gone around this thing pretty healthily, if you, uh, pretty, pretty heartily, I should say, um, ex liberally, excessively. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, soap that's turning into a brown ooze color. Um, <clears throat> that's all the oils and all the uh, dirt from someone's hands and all of the, um, you know, your, your pack and your pipe with tobacco, you get that uh, tobacco oils and, and, and toppings and all that on your fingers, and that touches the bowl. So you've got a lot of uh, junk that's coming up and rising up out of the briar. So I'm going to let this sit for a little bit longer, and then we'll wipe off the excess. So I'll be right back. All right, it's been sitting for quite a bit. Let's go ahead and wipe off the excess and see how we're looking. And then we'll probably have to put another application of uh, the Murphy's Oil Soap on the rim, but that's okay. Uh, we'll see how much we can remove by just wiping off the excess. All right. So I, right now I've been reading a lot about the, uh, the sinking of the Titanic. And um, I came across uh, some information about some officers survived the sinking of that thing. And it's not because they got in lifeboats, but because they survived out in the water. And uh, this one guy, Charles Lightoller, he actually survived by climbing up on top of a capsized lifeboat. It was laying, you know, upside down. He swam to it and got on it. He was the second highest ranking officer on the ship and the highest ranking officer to survive the sinking of the Titanic. Then I go on to read that this guy not only serves in World War I uh, in combat in the Royal Navy, but in his retirement, comes out of retirement in World War II, gets on his little boat called the Sundowner, and during the whole Dunkirk fiasco, he sails to Dunkirk and he's only got enough room on that boat to carry about 21 people because that's by regulation of you know, the boat maker. That's how many people it can hold. And he ended up rescuing like 127 British soldiers. But the reason I'm telling you this is Charles Lightoller was a, a lifelong pipe smoker, which they also um, said might have contributed to uh, his cardiac uh, issues that he was experiencing, but um, towards the end of his life. But a uh, remarkable story. They should make a movie about the guy. All right. So take a look. Much improved, but we still have work to do. Uh, if you look at the rim, you'll still see the remnants of the carbon. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go go at it again. And we're going to put some more Murphys around the rim. And we'll let that penetrate. We'll let that soak in. It depends on the thickness of that carbon. You know, uh, you're going to have to make that judgment call um, uh, as to how many times, how many applications you're going to need to put on your pipe. You're going to have to just keep experimenting and just keep applying it over and over and over until you start getting down to that wood. Um, if the person was a maniac and they ended up using some ridiculously hot torch lighter to light their pipe, well, then you might not be able to fix that because it will be actually burnt. But... Uh, just because your pipe has a real thick layer of uh, black on the rim doesn't mean that it's burnt. Um, I mean, take a look at that. I mean, that thing was covered, like all the way around, just black, and uh, came right off. So uh, don't be afraid uh, that uh, your pipe is ugly or that it's ruined. Uh, 
It's that's not the case at all. I I think if you just keep applying the Murphys, you'll you'll find some really nice wood underneath. You just gotta have patience, and you just have to stick with it. Okay, so that's our second coat, and uh, let's wait. Let's wait it out and see what happens. Okay, so I'll be back. <laughs> Welcome back to this old pipe. <laughs> uh, I uh, have this custom built, and that has the 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 um, carbon buildup on the rim too here. So let's do this one as well. Uh, while the other one is resting and uh, still waiting for that Murphy's to penetrate uh, the top of that uh, rim and get rid of all of that excess carbon. So we're just going to go around the rim here. Okay. Need some time just on this first application to sink in. Okay. And we'll go around this great big bowl. Gosh, so cool. This old big old Frankenstein looking thing. This genuinely looks like Glenn Strange's boot, right? From uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna go around, put a nice thin layer of Murphy's on here, and just let that start working its magic. Let that start lifting any dirt and oils and grime tars and whatever else that's gonna come out of here it's already starting to turn that nasty soap color the brown color because it's already starting to lift impurities and stuff all right so just going around the rim trying to dig those bristles in trying to get that to penetrate that carbon buildup. So let's go ahead and slather some more on. And we'll come back. And we'll let that sit. Cool. All right. Be back soon. Welcome back, YouTube Pop Smokers. Pork Chop Popper here. No, I'm, ki I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, uh, so let's. Take the, this is the, the CB stub, the custom built stub, and let's just wipe it off. And let's see if we were able to get all of the, the um, carbon build up off the bowl. Guys, we are almost there. Look at the difference, though. You saw how, how nasty it was when we started. There's only some very fine remnants on the bowl. Probably so little you, you may not even be able to see it or pick it up, but I can. So we're going to do one more application, not around the whole pipe itself, just on the rim just on the rim, okay? And this one has been sitting, but take a look at the top. See that real nasty brown stuff? That's that uh, carbon buildup lifting. So this one should clean up nice too. I just have to go get something and I'll show you another little tidbit that the Artful Codger showed me as far as making this rim look good and removing any of the excess. So before I do that, I'm just going to paint over those spots one more time that still need to lift some of that carbon buildup. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so we went around once. Let's let that sit. I'll be right back because I have to grab something um, and uh, we'll continue this. Okay, welcome back everybody. So here is the pipe and we've been letting it set for a while with the Murphys on the rim. Purpose of this video was to show you guys how to get rid of um, the carbon buildup on the rim. So uh, we're almost getting to the very end here. And let's wipe off the excess. And it looks like we've successfully removed all that finer stuff on the bowl or on the rim of the bowl. <clears throat> so, you know, been talking it over with quite a number of the YTPC presenters that, that I talk to on the phone and, and um, just about pipes in general and stuff. And we've both all come to the conclusion that, you know, it's so cool to not have to spend a ton of money on a pipe, uh, but instead, you know, you go to a, an indoor show or you go to a flea market and you find an estate pipe, and even though it's just full of cake and the rim is just totally full of carbon buildup, it's okay. You just go through these simple processes and you can have yourself a really darn nice, fine smoking pipe for not a lot of money. Uh, does it have to be a custom built? No, I don't. not everything I have is a custom built. This one here, this came from Bishop's Pipes. That's a cool custom-built clone. It was like $26, okay? Here's another one. Here's another one that came from Bishop's Pipes. This one's cool. See, I love these chunky Lavats. It's a cool custom-built clone. This one was also like 25, 26 bucks, something like that. So, you know, there's a lot of neat pipes uh, that you can find that, you know, are... Uh, built around the same time, come from the 1950s, come from the 1940s, that don't even have a name on them. But you might find them and look at them and be like, oh my God, like look at all this uh, carbon buildup on the rim. Well, I'll never be able to get that out. Yes, you can. And you could just use some Murphy's oil soap and a pipe cleaner and that'll get that off of there. All right, so now it's time to show you guys, this is a piece of, uh, of brain tan buckskin. So, uh, you know, doing historical reenacting, one of the, the, the common leathers that they had back in the day was called brain tan. Uh, you can't use brains anymore because that's uh, uh, a health hazard because of things like mad cow disease. But you can replicate the process and get uh, the same type of leather. It's extremely soft. So, saw this when I went to the Artful Codger's house. He took the bowl and he put it face down on the leather and then he proceeded to buff that, that rim, okay? And he used that nice soft side to buff that up nice. See that? Now, obviously I'm gonna put this on a buffer, but it's I think it's removing any of the last final remnants and uh, instead of the remnants leaving a, what do you want to call it, um, a not shiny surface, uh, this will remove that and give it probably uh, a more uniform appearance of luster. So there you have it guys, there's your finished product. There's all of the carbon buildup removed from a bowl. And then I'll start the other one and we'll take a look at both of them side by side. Here's that other bowl. Let's uh, wipe it off, see what we're looking at. Wow, already a big difference on this rim. A lot of junk is coming off of here. Or in the words of Curly, oh, this thing sure is dirty. <laughs> Don't you love that episode when they're selling Brito? 
They don't know what the hell it's for. They just know they need to sell it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they're rubbing the stuff on the guy's car. <laughs> He's taking the paint right off. <laughs> Curly. Oh, this thing sure is dirty. <laughs> hey, I think it's taking the paint off. <laughs> okay. So already a huge difference. Um, we've still got right here is some hardcore buildup. So this is where the time and the patience factor is going to come in. So we're going to just keep on reapplying it the way we were with the first custom built. And uh, we're just gonna keep on, uh, keep it on until this section here of the carbon is gone, okay? I'll be back. Okay, here we go. Let's add it again. Add that again and wait. You know, one of the real delights right now <laughs> You can't smell it as I'm sitting here and right in front of me, I've got a bag of Sutliff 515 RC1, which is their red cake match, which is divine. And then what smells even better than that is the Sutliff Revelation match. Oh my God, that stuff smells so good. It just smells so nutty. It smells nutty. I think it has a little bit of lot of key in there and <coughs> oh excuse me it just smells so good you smell that you can understand why Einstein smoked that stuff oh it smells so good I'm sure people will comment and say well it's a lot different now well I'm sure it is okay let's let it sit Ooh. <clears throat> cold. <laughs> this did my good deed for the day. I was sitting here waiting for this uh, custom built uh, uh, the oil to uh, get to that rim. And I, I hear like this faint tapping for maybe a minute or two. And I thought it was Molly scratching in the other room. Turns out it was my neighbor upstairs. She needed a jump. So we got her up and rolling. I told her to go to AutoZone and get herself a new battery. So my good deed for the day is done. All right. Whew. Okay, let's wipe this custom built off and let's see how much of that uh, uh, carbon buildup is left on the rim. Okay. Uh, we're getting quite a bit of yuck to come off of this, that's for sure. Um, I love, I've got a, a custom built, a real miniature version of this uh, that Grandpa Bones gave me. And it has this real dark briar too. I wonder, you know, you look at a piece of briar and just the sheer difference in color. You know, you wonder the difference or why that is, but it is what it is. But I just think it's so cool when you run into these ones that are nice and dark like this. Okay, so we're doing really good. We only have a little bit left right on the very edge. Okay, so it's coming off and it's coming off good. But again, the secret to removing all of that carbon buildup is time and patience. That's the only trick. It's time and patience. So let's go ahead and we'll put that uh, application on there again around the rim. Heavier there. And we will wait. Okay. We'll be back. All right. So let's go ahead and wipe off all the excess off this custom built do me a favor guys don't forget if, if you like this video or if you got a lot out of it do me a favor drop a comment below and give a thanks a big thanks to the artful codger uh, without Ben and without his knowledge and without him sharing this stuff 
um, this video would not be possible because I wouldn't know anything about this process. I'd still be buying new pipes that look nice and shiny and not uh, doing this myself. Uh, this is the easiest stuff in the world to do, guys. It's the easiest stuff in the world to do. It just takes time and a little bit of patience. So um, pipe smoking is meant to be enjoyed. It's supposed to be an enjoyable, pleasurable experience. <sighs> There's nothing more intimate about pipe smoking than doing this type of work. It really brings you close to the pipe and it just brings you a ton of enjoyment to re resuscitate and bring back to life these old pipes. Especially this, bring this big old Frankenstein thing back from the dead, literally. So um, we've got a little bit, and you know what? It's hard to tell. I still think it's carbon buildup. But, you know, a lot of lighters touch this. It could be, let's see. You know, you ever hear the expression, uh, elbow grease? Well, we're trying fingernail grease, and I see black underneath my fingernail, which tells me that it's carbon. All right, so that means the carbon is soft, and if the carbon is soft, you can do a little bit of gentle fingernail scraping to try and loosen it up, to get it started a little bit, you could say. So here we go again. It's not done yet, so we're gonna put a little bit more, hopefully between scraping that with my fingernail and rubbing some of this excess Murphy's on there that will get down to the bottom of that, okay? Cool, so we'll let that rest. And remember, uh, next time you see that estate sit out on the table, uh, at some flea market or at a garage sale or at the next antique store that you go to. If you really like the style and the size of that pipe and it really uh, speaks to you, it doesn't matter if that thing is loaded with cake and then there's a ton of char on the rim. As long as the bowl is not cracked and as long as the stem is intact, meaning there's no puncture marks from somebody's teeth going through uh, the vulcanite or the ebonite or whatever, as long as it's in decent shape. I mean, it could have tooth marks on it. That can come out. Uh, that can come out. You could use these micro mesh pads if you don't have a buffer or a or a, a grinder to, to you know or the you know the the buffing wheel that would actually remove that stuff. But um, yeah, as long as that pipe speaks to you and it's in relatively serviceable condition, you can take any pipe and bring it back to a state like I am. So uh, definitely um, try it, guys, try it. Okay, so you guys have already seen the process. As soon as I've got this, um, uh, as soon as I've got this uh, removed, it, it's gonna be ready uh, to finish uh, the actual uh, refurbishing process. So this was a little bit of a video um, maybe in a series of uh, how to refurbish pipes. And this one was on obviously getting these bowls uh, to have all the carbon off the rim. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I'll, maybe I'll do another video of applying the feed and wax to condition the briar. So until next time, you two pipe smokers, thank you for stopping by and I will talk to you soon.